needs to just play more games. It's week six and he's two and oh. Welcome to Whirlwind in the top right corner from Team Gamma Mania, the Gamma Bears. It is Sen, also known as Yang Cha Cheng. Yang Cha Cheng. I don't know if that's how you say it. In the top left, close enough, Andre. Thanks, close bro. enough is actually a good way to describe these spawn positions as well. In the top left corner, we have from Team Fnatic Raid Call, it is Night End. If it's Cha, it's actually with a Q, right? Uh, like yeah. QI? Yeah. Cha? Cha. So it's. Okay. Yeah, and if it's Q I U, it's Cho. Cho. Yeah. Gotcha. Which means ball in Chinese. Thank you, Frodan. The more yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, also, the more you know, thank you so much, Bitter, for leaving your balance sheet on this. I keep saying it, man. But uh, on the table, he actually gives me PVZ stats where we can see on Whirlwind, Protoss is actually winning on this map 57% of the time. Against Zerg. Against Zerg. Really? Even though Whirlwind's like the biggest map and a lot of Protoss players don't like it against Zerg? Correct. Wow. This map and Ohana are the only two maps in the North American Star League where we're featuring Protoss as winning more than Zergs. But Whoa. overall, if we look at the PvZ matchup, 43% of the time, Protoss is winning. Well, we'll see uh, how this actually is going to pair out. Sen, of course, is 2-0. and oh. Night End, uh, a little bit struggling in his division just because yeah. I mean, he had to play Stefano. He's 1-3 currently, not looking too well. And hopefully he's looking to get some ground here and pick up the pace. The very standard, you know, just blocking of the natural, but I don't think uh, Night End is really a player to actually do any cannon rushes. As Sen already scouts over his opponent's base and sees, oh, you don't have Forge down. I don't have to worry about any early game <laughs> shenanigans. So what that tells me, he's probably going to get his first queen and then immediately just gun over and take his third hatchery. Wow. Probably only get two Zerglings, too. Andre, the stats are in. The betting's ha betting has closed. 15,000 points have been put on this line. 90% betting sent and less than 10% for night end. Aww. GG Nair has put almost all of his points onto send over 6,000. Is that all wow. his points? I think it is. And guys, remember, this is because at the very end of the night, the top three people with the most points get a Heart of the Swarm beta key. Everyone is pushing in, man. Look at this. We're we're turning gamers into gamblers, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do? We should actually reward like the the number one person, not only with the Heart of the Storm beta key, but like a poster or something like that. That way there's like some discrimination. So even like third place, they can be like, oh I wanna really get this poster and then they vote a little bit more. Rather than, you know, playing super conservative. I wanna talk to our I I'm holding a meeting. You're calling a meeting? Yeah. Oh, well, these Zerglings are going to call a meeting on this pile. Oh, on this cannon as well. Now working onto the pylon. Andre, this is not very good. Yeah, this is looking good for 6,000 points doubling up. <laughs> uh, just for now, it's game number one, but still. Oh, look at uh, that whole position. Micro Night from end. the well, workers. I know. Well, it was using that trick tip. He watched Greetor's <laughs> trick tip right before yeah. he did this. Night end. He doesn't mess around, man. Uh, he needs to buy time for that. Uh, this is not a Oh, yeah, he's ending. doing move, move position, Micro. That's this good. Is, uh, oh, no, losing one. This is not game ending, it's just annoying. Uh, uh, it's okay. I mean, like, this pretty much describes sibling rivalry. On it's not the end of the world, <laughs> it's just annoying. On a caster level, yes, it is not the end, uh, is not game ending. On a professional level, a lot of pros would actually say the game's over. Like, there's no more, uh, there's nothing that Night Egg can do. Uh, and the only reason is because it's, a, it's like a, a very silly mistake to have happen. And, um,. You are like a minute behind your opponent. So, yes, I mean, Night End can still uh, survive, but it's going to be hard to keep up and be able to win at that, even, you know, the pre 200, 200 levels. And it's just because Sen has such a head start in not only economy, but tech. I mean, the gas has been significantly delayed in this game, and that is going to spell trouble. You could even make a double. That's right. Andre. Uh, Sen is it's also just keeping a good scout on his opponent. He's also dropping uh, a relatively early roach for him. Uh, and just, again, he's being safe. But, uh, of course, Sen being Sen, you can't really necessarily say he will do A or B. All we know is that Sen loves drones, although maybe not so much right now because he is behind in the drone count. He's only got 25. Oh, change. Oh. Blink of an eye, man. You said, you said 25. Instantly, there were 35. 
Like, this guy loves his drones, but yes, he is doing rich pressure now. And I love this decision. Think about it. You know your opponent is so far behind in tech, in economy. Go ahead and lean on your opponent. And you say, okay, what's a build that I can do that actually, you know, forces him to get further behind? And roaches are the perfect option, because think, what can Night End really do against mass roaches? Not a lot. You know, if it's mass zergling baneling, yes. Night End would be able to defend that with, let's say, sentries and what have you. Roaches are going to be a whole different story. Just ask Rotterdam. That's right. Roaches, uh, roaches can do anything in this scenario. Oh, no. The depot. Oh, he could target the depot. Oh, my goodness. Everyone forgets about this depot. In fact, even Sen has forgotten about the depot, kind of. <laughs> and he's just going to go ahead and pressure into here. Second cannon is about to finish. Sen's going to target down this forge. Uh, that works, too. One. Does work. Although it's another entry point that has oh been denied. Oh my god, I can't believe they... <laughs> is, is this depot indestructible or something, or untargetable? <laughs> I don't know. Man. And no one ever uses this depot. I know, man. it's so funny. Um, it's, uh, it's actually quite funny. Oh, another entry point, and uh, that is going to drop another force yield. So and don't then think we'll so. back off. He can still pick off, yeah, this pylon. Look at that. He picks off the pylon, and... Uh, wow. Open sesame. Open it. Open nice. it. Okay, open it. No, oh. I, I mean, can you really keep pushing in here? The Void Rays now. Uh, yeah, oh, I guess so. he's more conservative than me. I just like winning games oh. super fast. Uh, probe in the bottom right-hand corner, that's something important to mention because there are a couple of follow-up pressure builds that Nighting can do. I would love it if he actually went Void Ray pressure at the main and then units on the bottom over here and just start warping in stuff, and really trying to separate his opponent's uh, units all around the map. That'd be really, really cool, but we'll see what Night End does. He's just tracking these roaches. They don't have glory constitution, so they cannot uh, move faster than the Void Ray. So the Void Ray should have been able to continue to attack. But what do we have so far, Froden? Holy moly. A lot of gates. A lot of gates. Eight gates. At least nine, nine gates. gates. Why not nine gate, nine gate, star gate? Uh, Washi with nine gate with one void. This is actually a variation of what Nayan did against Stefano onto Ohana, where he maybe didn't go nine gates, but he did get one void ray and then uh, mm -hmm. pushed out. And you know what? Nine gates gives you enough to warp in offensively, maybe warp in something back at home if you're getting counterattacked. But you know what? This allows Nayan to ma micro a little bit more and doesn't have to worry so much on the macro. Yeah. And you know what, Froden, the main difference as well is the fact that these three sentries didn't actually have to use up their energy in the beginning uh, in this particular game. So he will be able to establish position a little bit better than that Stefano game that we saw previous to this. Now let's go ahead and find out what happens with Knight oh. and... Uh-oh. Oh, oh wow, knows. Spire going down. Oh, so going to drop a Spire, but uh, he might not have enough time to really defend this third send. Is ooh, nice job here from uh, Nightens also charge up this void ray onto the destructible rocks. San is going to try to get up his spine crawler and get out more roaches, but he needs to, a little bit more. He wants to defend, although there is no upgrades onto the stalkers, and that does make a big difference. Garden shield helping it reduce a lot of the damage. Nice. Plus one, plus one is not finished either for Sen. And a blink forward from Night End. He's really taking an aggressive stance. If he wants to finish it, he's got to be able to take out this third base. Sen also pulling his drone, traps a couple of the stalkers. Roaches hatch, maybe just at the right nick of time. More queens are popping out. Spine crawler also now adding in DPS. And this is a lot of damage, though, from the Stalkers. Night End's blinking forward. Oh, Whoa. no! And the Queen will go down. It looks like a couple of Roaches are going to try to engage here, but engaging is really, really tough. Now the Roaches are going to die. Uh, additional Roaches coming in from the top, and I don't know if it's going to be enough, Froden. I think it is, Andre. A lot of Stalkers are weak. Oh, They're God. blinking past, but uh, the Spine, the spore, spine Crawler is doing a pretty good job damaging it, at least for now. Sten has stabilized, making more Roaches, although if, I mean, there's the third drop, that's going to be really good for Night End. Again, those upgrades now starting to kick in, reducing the Stalker damage. Roaches are doing a pretty good job, and Sen's Roaches are pretty hardy. More Roaches coming in from the north as well. Night End's also blocking his ability to escape with the Blinks. Sen is making us extremely close, but looks like he has stabilized wow. once more. How does Sen do this, Froden? I don't understand. I mean, he doesn't even have mining, uh, mining base from a third. And in most of these situations, I mean, when you're on nine gateways against two base on how many hatcheries? Just two? 
I mean, he's still keeping up. This just doesn't make sense to me. And I guess it is the upgrades, but man, oh man, Night End. Oh, by the way, that, that link to actually get off creep was, I think, incorrect. He can't afford something like that because he's actually losing a lot more stalkers than he needs to. Uh, Sen's also adding a macro hatchery, realizing that the gravity situation needs to keep uh, his production as high as possible. Focus on his roaches and controlling it correctly. More blink micro from Night End. Pretty good job blinking them individually, really trying to optimize it. But some stalkers are dropping, or are they? No, they're not. Night End doing a great job microing. Wow. Uh, <laughs> you can see the, the contrast in uh, even that Stefano game. Those The power of those sentries in the, the beginning stages are just so, so good. And now the roach count has cleaned up pretty drastically. I think, uh, yeah, he needs to drop back to the natural and just situate back. Does Night End have a follow-up after this? No, he's just been making stalkers. That's it. And he yep. needs to keep applying the pressure because he can't let up uh, due to the fact that 1-1 one, one against 0-0 zero, zero is going to be a lot worse as time goes on. And that's why we just see roaches, roaches, roaches. A forge is going to go down. Um, yeah, he needs wow, to, I guess I'm he wants actually, to get upgrades again. Yeah, I'm actually surprised about that. I, I would have figured he actually continues just pressuring as much as possible. I think actually mackering up from here is incorrect. Well, uh, Zanian is going to try to do it, although he's, uh, he's forcing the issue. Oh, wow, that's a dangerous blink. Especially on creep, you have to be careful because if there were reinforcements directly behind there and the Sen just swings around, those are all regular stalkers without blink. There's going to be at least, you know, six, seven, eight of those stalkers that die. So you need to be super careful. Sen right now has an alarming amount of roaches. Let me check this right now. 41 roaches. Are you kidding me? Is this real life? That's, uh, that's I don't that's know how lot. he did this. He's got that off two base, too. Income uh, tab is showing 50 to 58, so it's not mm. even like he has the worker advantage. Although this will be good. Uh, offensive blink, nicely done. Off creep, you can do stuff like that. But more roaches coming from the right-hand side. Now forces a retreat, but oh, I don't know if he's going to be able to actually catch those stalkers. And no, he backs off from here. Night End wow. also has a few sentries back at home in case the pressure would continue. Night End also starting a robotics facility. Sen getting his infestation pit and starting to expand to a different spot for his third base, realizing it's probably a little bit better to keep it closer to the creep spread. Uh, Sen now has made a lot of zerglings as well. His work count's pretty low, considering uh, Night End's oh. been able to keep a pretty healthy probe count. Although, can... Night End hold this base? Can Sen hold this base? Their thirds are practically crossing swords. I think Sen is going to come in from the killing for the killing blow right here. Uh, Zerglings are going to be the bane of this army composition's mm. existence just because stalkers are not good at dealing with oh very, very large goodness. numbers. So many if roaches. these stalkers stay there, Froden, this is not well, good for Night End! The force field stopping a couple of the, the roaches from being able to get in, but now they have a good position. No immortal being squeezed out from the uh, robotics at all. Lots of Zerg units. Can Night End hold? He's blinking back as efficiently as possible. More Zerg coming from the respawners on the right as well. Night End's third. I mean, even if you can't hold this, the third will be have to be forced to cancel. Oh, that's brutal. Absolutely brutal because it still is a long time before those upgrades are in relevancy. Yes, he has plus one, but the fact of the matter is plus one Carapace is up. That means you still do not two-shot these Zerglings. That means these Zerglings are still empowered. On top of that, you can see, yes, Immortals are out. Yay, that's awesome. But Fungals, Infested Terrans are on the way with upgrades. One, one is up. That means those Infested Terrans get that added DPS, and that is so scary, Froden. I really feel like Sen is just monstrously far ahead, and I don't know how he did it because he lost his third base. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me, Froden. Can you please explain that to me? How does this guy win off of losing a third base? I, I mean, Andre, I'm, I'm still kind of tripping out because I'm so used to playing Harless Forum that I clicked on the infestation pit. And I'm like, oh, send research the locust re thing, the locust life. I'm like, wait, this is not the right, <laughs> that's not the <laughs> right game. Minute. That's plus What's one melee attack. <laughs> I'm like, no, I was like, I click on the infestation pit. I was like, does he have pathogen uh, glands? I'm like, oh, he has pathogen glands and locust life. Oh no, a lot of these are clumped oh. up there. The immortal can get immediately caught as well. Sen able to capitalize on a missed position. Lance Fungles on the rest of the Stalkers as well. Has a couple more left. Oh my goodness. Night End, who is having a probe transfer, also bringing in them to fight as well. Sen able to whittle down the Protoss supply some way, somehow. GG. And Sen able to take the first game of this best of three. 
16,000 points are like, whew, right now for now because it looked pretty close. Night End looked for, like, for a while like he was going to break Sen. Yeah, and it looked like a lot of the people betting on Sen were about to break something. <laughs> Sen making you guys sweat at home, of course. 9 to 1 right now. 90% of you guys felt that Sen was going to win this best of three. Uh, but very, very well. I, I actually have no analysis for that game because I don't know how Sen actually did that. I, I like the timing of his macro hatchery, realizing his queen was starting to build up energy. Says, I need stuff to handle the, the, the stalkers. Uh, stalkers were pretty badly upgraded because they were 0, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. They had nothing on them. Sniping the forge was really key. Uh, and Sen just realized I need to prioritize surviving over maybe trying to get my economy up. Great job by Sen. Yes, sir. Uh, the game was brought to you by Kingston HyperX. For all your SSD and memory needs, go to kingston.com slash US slash memory slash HyperX. We'll be back right after this with game two between Sen and Night. And don't go anywhere. More action right after this.